Now I planted a lot of clover in the past. My first food plot in 1995 was a clover field and learned a lot since then. Uh, learned a lot of different ways to plant clover, especially in making sure we had weed-free clover. I've maintained a clover, for a clover field for at least 10 years. So I've learned a lot about clover, planted a lot of different ways, and I've learned a few things, uh, a few ways not to plant it. One of the ways that I'm hoping I can catch a few of you right now from planting in the spring is you're planting your favorite clover blend in the spring without a cover crop. It's one of my biggest failures. Is actually clover planted with brassica in May in 1999. The deer ate it down to the dirt, the brassica, by sometime in end of June, July, because there's no green forage. That was, I learned in 99 that it doesn't take frost for deer to eat brassica. It's funny because some studies have shown just in the last few years, yeah, you don't need frost for deer to eat brassica, but we figured that out 20 years ago, and over 20 years ago, and that clover was established and it looked really good the end of May, June, brassica was coming up, the brassica was eaten, and then what happened? We didn't get more than an inch of rain in nine weeks, all fizzled out under the heat and died. So that was a clover field that was at least five inches tall and, uh, and then it got hit with heat and died. So I learned quickly that, well, learned a few things with that planting. One, you don't plant brassica that time of year. That wasn't, we were just experimenting back then. Uh, two, it didn't matter if the brassica had frost on it or not, the deer would eat it, and depending on the area. Now, if I did that in Agland somewhere, that wouldn't happen. But in a northern Michigan setting at that time, it was up in the UP of Michigan. I'm in Minnesota right now, been in Wisconsin before that. So, um, But in a UP of Michigan setting where it's very wooded, no Agland, not a lot of food, they ate it down in the dirt. It was the only thing high quality and green in the area. There was a lot of pine, tag alder leather leaf just a lot of garbage not not great deer habitat they ate it down to the dirt so i've learned that if i plant clover in the spring you plant it with 50 pounds of oats per acre so you have a cover crop just like the farmers would do with hay and then you mow the hay out when it's a couple months old allow the clover to release now you have a great stand it'll be it'll be less susceptible to uh, summertime drought uh, lack of rain and I also learned with clover, and we'll talk about different planting ways, you find clover is one of the easiest things you could ever plant. Very, very easy to plant. But I plant it with, back in the day, we did experimentation because no one was mixing clover with chicory at that time. No one was mixing clover with brassica at that time either. So it was all new experimentation stuff. The chicory thought, well, this is great because people like it when it's drought. You know, there's drought, chicory will still be moist. It has a long tap root, gets down on the ground. So that all sounds great on paper. Um, the problem with it is a lot of areas they don't, deer don't like it very much. Like for us, they'd eat it when the deer were on their migration routes in November, December, coming through the property with a lot of snow and it was the only thing left. They'd eat the chicory last. They'd probably welcome up that, that time. Other areas, chicory does well, like in Kentucky, West Virginia, areas where you get a lot of heat during the summer, it withers your clover away. Maybe Tennessee, Arkansas, Oklahoma, you know, that high summer heat. And then you have that chicory left that they'll hammer because it's moisture laden because of that tap rut, it can get down and it doesn't drought out and fizzle out during the summer like clover would. So it's a really welcome addition to clover for that reason. It's just another type of perennial within that blend the deer will eat during different times. And so I do like it for that. But the reason we really liked it back in the day, you know, over 20 years ago, is because I'd have this half of the plot planted in clover and chicory and this half over here just straight clover what would happen you get into that high summer heat and you lose your nurse crop in that area where you don't have chicory chicory acted as a nurse crop so over on this half we'd have more lush clover growing with the chicory and on this half without the chicory it'd be withered down into that pukey green color kind of greenish yellow color and that was a sign of stress, summertime stress, and the only difference was the chicory. So the chicory, about three quarters of a pound per acre, you don't want much more than that, because three pounds per acre is a full boat. So when you're putting in three quarters of a pound, that's about 25% of the field, if you look at it that way, and that mixture as it, as it relates to and contributes to that overall acreage. So that chicory was great with clover. Now let's back up, planting clover. If I'm gonna plant in the spring, again, 50 pounds of oats per acre, but you don't need to frost seed. It's really critical to understand. A lot of people out there frost seeding clover. You don't need to frost seed clover at all. 
In fact, there's a lot of fields. You can see a lot of broadleaf weeds down here. We need to control. I'm going to plant this field in clover this year, but I'm going to take care of my weeds first. I don't need to frost seed clover. That clover is not going to germinate until the soil temperature gets to the right temperature and we get moisture. I'll have time for at least one spring before that time. So I'll get that spraying on, this is already a chemically controlled weed but, uh, field, but we have some broadleafs in here. So I'm gonna hit with 2,4-D and Roundup on spring green up. I'm gonna kill these broadleafs out of here. I'm gonna wait about a week and then I'll plant the clover. Now, if this is a weedy field where I had a lot of weeds in here, I'd hit it with 2,4-D Roundup. Four weeks later, and that'd be when the weeds are 10, 12 inches high, first thing in the spring. I'm gonna wait four to five weeks after that, get a little bit more weed growth in there. And then I'll broadcast my clover perennial blend, and then I'll hit it with uh, Roundup at that time on the same day. It won't hurt the seed in any way. Roundup is a really low power herbicide, and so it's not going to hurt the clover. It doesn't even hit, hurt clover when it's growing. It just sets it back a little bit. So that's why we've practiced one quart per acre on established clover before a rainy period, and you'll knock out a percentage of your weeds and not knock out your clover. That's because Glyphosate is not a very powerful herbicide like 2,4-D, simazine, atrazine, quinclauric, clothodim, some of the other specialty herbicides that you can offer. The bottom line is you want to control your weeds. And so there's no need to frost seed clover. There's people frost seeding clover out there on snow and that's ridiculous. For one, if we did that here, all our seed might end up down there in a quick melt. So you don't want to do that on snow, on ice. Not a good idea to frost seed anything. Switchgrass, you need to frost, frost seed earlier if you have poor quality switchgrass, meaning you have a high hard seed count. We've seen mixes with 70% or higher of hard seed count with switchgrass. That's not going to germinate typically for another year. So you don't want to buy that. We pay a little bit extra from our supplier, well, quite a bit extra, to tell you the truth, to ensure that we have at least 80% germination rate and then we maintain a very low level of hard seed count so that switchgrass seed is available for germination once the soil temperature hits the temperature it's supposed to be for switchgrass in the high 50s and then uh, you get enough moisture you have to have both those things and it's the same with clover clover you don't have hard seed clover or soft seed it's available for germination right away so in the springtime you need to take care of your weeds on a weedy field again you'd spray 2,4-D Roundup when the weeds are 10, 12 inches high spray glyphosate about four or five weeks after that throw your clover seed down you're going to get a great catch now my favorite way and timing to plant clover is with a cool season annual in the fall. That gives me a 365 day planting, meaning I can plant our perennial blend that we have along with brassica. We actually have a dual, a 365 dual threat that is actually clover and brassica combined. We take the big bulbs out of it because if you have 40% bulbs in the field going into the spring, that's 40% of your field where clover is not going to grow because the bulbs are taking up space. You take the bulbs out. We take the chip, chicory and bird's foot trefoil out because you want that clover to establish a good mat. You can add chicory or bird's foot trefoil or alfalfa into it, frost seed it the following year or broadcast before uh, spring green up or during spring green up. The bottom line is I'm adding that clover with a cool season annual. That cool season annual could be brassica, which would be in our area right around here, would be around August 1st. If you're down in Kentucky, that might be mid to late August. And then about four weeks later, I'm going to add rye if needed. For example, if the brassica was decimated, but that clover still being established could add the rye four weeks later to salvage a plot. It's not going to hurt the switch or the uh, clover. The following year, you can spray out your rye to kill it in the spring with clethodim. It won't hurt the clover. Or you can mow out the rye and kill it. Or I'm just going to combine clover with oats, rye, or wheat five weeks, four weeks after that initial planting of the brassica clover combo and establish my clover that way. I'm not expecting the clover to offer anything for the fall. In fact, I mostly don't want it to. In fact, I want that cool season annual. That's what's going to be the driving force during the fall and what the, real, the deer really need before, before wintertime. It'll give them the most volume. That rye is available right after spring green up, which is really critical for the deer too. There's not much green in the woods right now except for rye. So two ways you can plant it during the fall, either with a cereal grain, which would be Labor Day around here to end of September, to where you're, depending on where you're at in the country, or with brassica sometime in August, early to late August, and then what you're left with the following year, you either have to kill the rye out, you're left with pure clover, 
if you have brassica that you planted with or oats, those are both gone by the following spring. And then you're left with pure clover. Now that clover, because it's fall established at a time when weeds are dying, not thriving, at a time when moisture is only on the increase, as opposed to the decrease in the spring, then that clover will stand any drought you can throw at it the following year because it's had its feet established through fall, spring green up, and then into summer, it'll withstand. I've never lost a clover crop that way going back. Boy, I can't even think now uh, where we're at with, uh, with planting, but almost 30 years of planting clover. So we have a really good perennial blend of various clovers that I handpicked, uh, bird's foot trefoil, chicory, a little bit of alfalfa. It's kind of like, look at the alfalfa and bird's foot trefoil that cancel each other out. So check, our, check out our, our, our perennial uh, blend that we have on our WHS Wildlife Blends uh, site. But uh, lots of different ways to plant clover. Always remember in the spring, as long as you have moisture coming, you give it a good cover, a cover crop, nurse crop, then you don't have to worry about it droughting out in the spring. You have a lot of time to plant. We're, we're shooting this on March 22nd. We literally have probably until where I would feel comfortable planting clover all the way to about June 1st, as long as we get moisture in June, we'd be okay with that. If you're planting early, like maybe you have chemically controlled fields, you're going to throw that clover out here in April. Make sure you plant your oats more, I would say, uh, early May around here, mid-May to where it's not going to go through a lot of frost and freeze or it'll kill it. So that oats, those oats can't go through frost and freeze. You want only one or two or three frosts left in the season for those oats and you'll get a good stand. But this is actually a field where we're going to plant a clover field. Um, we're going to plant clover this year. You can see where we're at. We're going to get rid of these trees that I cut to get sunlight. Yes, you need sunlight with clover. It is shade tolerant, but there's no shade tolerant blend. You know the best shade tolerant blend you can plant? Is to get rid of these trees. That's the best practice. Just get rid of the trees. Make sure you get enough sun onto your plot. That's the remedy to any shady plot. There's no shady plot blend. It's basically a blend designed to take your money, but there's no shady food plot blend that's gonna grow well in the shade or partial shade. We even have an apple tree back there. I cut the trees around it. Those are laying on the ground right now. We'll clean that up. We have a stand right up there. You can see Jack's Tower stand from Family Traditions. The red cedar right next to it, we're actually gonna put a stand because we want that tower somewhere else behind a red cedar bush in a really cool cruising area. So we're gonna be able to use that, that uh, tripod a little bit more putting it there. I think we might even extend, the, extend this plot because it's narrow and on a hillside that clover will do outstanding. We've had trouble here with the poor soil, not a lot of sun, so we're gonna change that. If anything else, if the clover ends, ends up being a little thin on this hunting plot going into the season because of drought and overuse by deer, then we'll spread 200 pounds of winter rye around Labor Day and enjoy the season. You can't spread seed into an established clover field like brassica, like rye, like oats. We tried that 20 some years ago and what ends up happening is the clover chokes out the cool season annual. It'll shade out rye, wheat, oats, brassica, an established mat of clover, it's a smother crop. That means that it smothers the ground with shade and that crop can't grow. So don't do that either. So if you have any questions about clover, put them in the comments down below. Got a, close to 30 years experience planting clover and mixing clover and planting it the wrong way, the right way. And I uh, can really help you out with that. Check out our WHS Wildlife Blends um, website. It's a new website. It explains all about our seed. And then also we have our parent site, whitehabitatsolutions.com. You click on seed there, it'll take you to the new site. They're connected back and forth. So we really appreciate the people that have purchased our seed in 46 states and growing. We only have four more to check off the list, and, uh, but we really appreciate it. And uh, we're going to be planting a little bit of clover this year in some of our favorite hunting plots and uh, making sure we get enough sunlight to it still. And uh, we'll, we'll enjoy these clover fields. It's taking back to my roots. I hope you enjoy your clover this year. And uh, we're enjoying the, the warmer weather right now, meaning it's in the low 40s. Snow's melting, we're here birds chirping. We just had a rooster pheasant take off in front of us. Dylan went and uh, just had to flush it to get some slow-mo video that's actually really cool. So appreciate it, Dylan. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna head back to the house. We've shot seven videos today and it's time we caught some perch on Monday and we're gonna have a little fish fry, can't wait. Now, I don't know if you've checked out our main website lately, whitehabitatsolutions.com, but we've really had a lot going on, including hats, books, 
our web class, and certainly our new seed company, WHS Wildlife Blends. When you click on seed on our site, it'll take you right to our brand new site for the seed company. We have all 12 blends available. So check it all out though. I encourage you, I appreciate you checking it out. Whether you buy anything or not, really appreciate you visiting the site and uh, seeing what's going on and continue to watch because we have big things coming later this year.